A new effort to protect women's reproductive rights is coming to Washington State. We'll hear from one of the sponsors of the bill and why she's pushing for it. Missouri could become the first state without a legal abortion clinic. Planned Parenthood says it's fighting back. More warm temperatures and sunny conditions are on the way, but we are tracking the possibility of a few afternoon thunderstorms headed our way. 7 a.m. on our Wednesday morning. Welcome to Creme 2 Morning News on the CW22. I'm Jen York. And I'm Evan Rani. Oh, I, was, I wasn't sure if you were going to say who I am as well. I'm going <laughs> to let you do your thing as well. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's just Wednesday. Here we are halfway through the week. Look, we worked on Monday, so we get a break. Yeah, it's exactly. Through the work so week. if it's your, it might be some people's Tuesday out there, yes. but hey, we are halfway through. <laughs> two days away from Friday, if you don't count today. That's right. And hey, also coming up on the show today, animal lovers, of course, mm. watching this morning, Spoke Animal helps hundreds of animals every year find their forever homes. It also just reopened a clinic to help those animals in need. So coming up in just a few minutes, Creme 2's Kira L. Fallen will let us know about some changes that are coming to Spoke Animal and how you yourself can get involved. Both Jen and I are proud cat owners. I mean, courtesy of Spoke Animal. That's my can Zelda. That's Zelda. And that's not a gremlin. That is in fact. <laughs> you might, well, well someday she <laughs> so might be. She kind of is. Debatable. Yeah, right? <laughs> I have my little dwarf cat, don't worry. I'm sure she's out the window, looking out the window right now and at home. Yeah, we're cat people here yeah. on the show, if you mm -hmm. haven't noticed. <laughs> uh, Weather-wise today, I think the big story is some places might see 90 degrees. Yeah, how about that? If Yikes. you're in Moses Lake, down south toward the Tri-Cities, uh, your hometown, Walla Walla. Always All spots toasty. that, uh, yeah, right? You're, you you know what that's like. Love it. Yeah, so we could be warming up even more as we go towards the next uh, few days. Already, we're warming up this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, 702, let's look outside. Uh, we're so far, so good. We're going to be uh, warming our way up to likely the uh, 80 degree range easily. We're already just a few degrees above average for those afternoon highs. So uh, for our morning overnight lows and as we near towards our afternoon highs, right now Spokane is two degrees warmer than yesterday. Yesterday was above average. But not only are we two degrees warmer than yesterday, we're about 10 degrees warmer than average. So uh, Pullman, five degrees warmer. Coeur d'Alene, three degrees warmer. Satellite radar showing a lack of activity out there. No clouds, no uh, showers. It's a great way to start off our Wednesday morning, more of a spring-like weather pattern. But the thing is, we are still considering the possibility of some afternoon thunderstorms. That takes place just after the three o'clock hour. We see more instability, unstable surface heating, and uh, that leads to pretty rapid cloud development when it happens. So where we saw that yesterday was just around the Ritzville area and down south toward uh, Richland. The activity was just between about 6 p.m. and 8 p.m. It led to a severe thunderstorm uh, warning that took effect and has now expired. But as we go towards our afternoon, we're expecting 81 degrees for that afternoon high. Sunny skies along the way. Take a little bit of time to cool down from there. It's 7.03 right now. We'll be talking a little bit more about those thunderstorms in just a bit. But we do want to take a look at what the roads look like to start off our day. Right now, clear roads, uh, surface streets all looking good. Highways looking good. Uh, though there are more people on the roads just around now headed out for the their morning commute. Uh, we are seeing at least less people since many people have made their uh, return plans already for Memorial Day weekend. So roads are looking good. We'll let you know if anything changes. But for now, Jen, I will send things back over to you. Evan, thank you. It is coming up on 704. A Washington lawmaker is asking Congress to pass legislation to protect access to abortion. Congresswoman Susan Delbonet is co-sponsoring the Women's Health Care Protection Act. Six other Democratic representatives are co-sponsoring the bill. The bill would prevent states from imposing restrictions on abortions, including so-called heartbeat bills. It's in direct response to the restrictive laws recently passed in states in, in conservative states. The bill was introduced in the House of Representatives last week. These laws are designed to attack Roe versus Wade with the hope that one day the Supreme Court will overturn a woman's constitutional right to seek an abortion. And we're not just fighting for our futures, we're fighting for the futures of our daughters and our country. Several conservative states, including Kentucky, Mississippi, Ohio, and Georgia, all banned abortion once a fetal heartbeat is detected. That can happen when a woman is six weeks pregnant. Alabama passed legislation that bans almost all abortions except when a woman's health is at risk. A lawsuit filed last week aims to block Alabama's law. 
Also, a judge temporarily blocked Mississippi's ban from going into effect. And by the end of this week, women in Missouri may not be able to get a legal abortion anywhere in the state. The last abortion clinic could shut down as early as Friday. Missouri lawmakers are considering not renewing Planned Parenthood's license. This comes just days after the state's governor signed a law banning abortion after eight weeks with no exceptions for rape or incest. Planned Parenthood is suing to keep its clinic open. A court hearing is set for today. Leaving more than a million reproductive age Missourians without access to the fundamental health care that they deserve in their state. So far, nine states have passed anti-abortion laws this year. Five other states are working to do the same. Those laws have not taken effect yet. If Missouri's last clinic shuts down, the state will become the first to effectively end all legal abortions since Roe v. Wade was established in 1973. Netflix is the first major company to say it will pull all of its productions from Georgia. The company says it's rethinking its investment in the state in response to its new abortion law. The film industry is the second largest moneymaker in Georgia. If Netflix pulls the plug on the state, it would be a major blow to the state's economy. 706 now back here closer to home. Spoke Animals Dorothy Clark Animal Clinic is open to the public once again. Krim 2's Kiera Alfallen is joining us live from the shelter this morning. And Kiera, it looks like you have a little furry friend with you there. But also tell us about some projects that are going to be in the works here soon. Yes, good morning, Jen. Well, oh this is gosh, Rocky so Balboa. So this is the clinic's cat. I hope you can hear the noises that he makes because they are adorable. He actually has a health condition, but he's doing pretty well right now. So he is the clinic's cat. So previously, Spoke Animal was just offering care in-house for their pets like this because they had to close down for a little while uh, due to some financial problems. Now they're open back to the public again. So they're open with some new changes and hours. They're open on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and that's when they're doing space and neuters and they also have their walk-in vaccination clinic so they offer low-cost care for families in need and that clinic the walk-in vaccination clinic is from tuesday and thursday as well and that's from 2 p.m to 4 30 p.m the executive director of spoke animals says staff members are happy to be able to provide this service to the public again especially right now uh, since they're in the middle of kitten season we just needed to stop, regroup, and figure out what, what our mission was and what we really wanted to focus on. And then we were able to reopen and offer our services again. With all of us, we're working toward the same goal to stop the overpopulation so that our shelters are not overcrowded. By midsummer, Spoke Animal is hoping to have an on-site kitten nursery up and running so staff can care for and raise kittens before adopting them out. They are also hoping to have a separate building for this and as always would love any help they can get from the public. So if you would like to help out, you can donate at any time. Just head over to our website at creme.com. Another way staff say you can help with the overpopulation problem is by bringing in your pets to have them spayed or neutered. So we're also here live outside of Spoke Animal's Barket Market thrift store. They've got a lot of stuff stuff in here. They've got different books. They've got clothes in here, different trinkets. I know Nate, who's behind the camera, already grabbed four books. So their hours are Monday through Friday from 11 to 6 and Saturday from 10 to 5. But this Friday and Saturday, they are having a parking lot sale. They've got a lot of stuff that they want to sell. So if you want to come and thrift, this is the right place to do it. I'll send it back to you in the studio. All right, Kiara, thank you so much for sharing that information and that cat. Oh my gosh, the purring is so to cute. So cute. <laughs> All right, 709 now. Well, are you worried about how you might be impacted by tariffs and trade issues? Deal boss Matt Granite has some tips that can help. And with so much going on in our daily lives, it can be hard to manage your time. We have a few tips to help keep you on track.